On today's episode of Lockdown Wild, Ryan Hartman getting a sussy for throwing his stick at an official. <laughs> we'll discuss. And Murat who's Nadinov getting a bump in the lineup. All that coming up on today's episode of Lockdown Wild. Let's hit that intro music. You're locked on wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is happening, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you, as always, for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platforms so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. On today's episode of Locked on Wild, we discuss uh, news from the weekend as Marcus Foligno was uh, officially shut down for the season. We'll talk about the growing number of games that Foligno has missed over the last few seasons, plus Ryan Hartman losing his mind at the end of the Vegas game and likely either getting fined or suspended or both. We'll talk about that, and we'll talk about one of the cool things that uh, that I had a chance to see over the weekend, Murat Nadinov getting bumped up in the lineup as well. My name is Seth Topal, your daily Minnesota Wild insider, credentialed Wild Media member, joined by Alex Micheletti for today's episode. Uh, a no point <laughs> Micheletti Monday. And that's a real poor way of phrasing that, but it has to do with what happened in Saturday's game. And I realize it is April 1st. (laughs) This is not an April Fool's Day joke. Um, If you saw the game against the Vegas Golden Knights, Minnesota Wild tried the empty net. And I'm just going to I'm just going to throw it out there because this was I, I got a good laugh out of this. So everybody up in the box, we're watching the game. And all of a sudden you see Philip Gustafson head to the bench and we're all just like. (laughs) Like he just did, he's doing, he's doing it again, but Vegas clearly watched the film because they were able to intercept the one shot that the wild got in front of the net and Jonathan Marcia. So with the Marcia slam dunk, uh, into the empty net, no points from Billy Madison. I award you no points. May God have mercy on your soul. The wilds needed to, they get none. Um, perfect encapsulation, Alex, of how this season has gone is the team. They, they battle for a good portion of the game, but they just kind of lose contain down the stretch and one bad turnover leads to the tying goal. And it's at this point, the only thing that we're waiting for is the mathematical elimination for this season to officially shift focus to uh to what comes next yeah and of course it has to be vegas too that pretty much puts the nail in the coffin and jonathan marcheso too who's just uh you know an all-time you know big you know when, whenever you need a goal jonathan marcheso is there to you know to deliver for dude's got 40 goals this season i was like it's amazing and he yes. they might not be able to keep him, but uh you know that would you know, if, if he if he becomes available for any team, you know that 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 would be number one uh, for sure on on any type of list. Yeah, I mean, at least at least the Vegas won't have to give him up for future considerations, like they had to do for Max Pacioretty um, in the off season. Just we can't afford you, so we're just gonna dump some salary. I I, I still can't believe you know how good that team is, and they're gonna add Tomas Hurdle to the to the mix. And then Mark Stone too. It's, Unbelievable! It, it's like literally, it's the Monstars uh, coming alive. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's incredible. It's the Stanley Cup champions, defending Stanley Cup champions, just loading up before the uh, the postseason. But 
basically it's it's all over but the crying at this point like the, the season is is we're down to the single digits for playoff chances it's at about two percent at this point we i think have all been kind of waiting for this point for a long time just because of kind of realizing how this was going to play out but you know we're we're starting to see the signs Marcus Foligno getting shut down is a big one. And Alex, like if we look at Foligno's ledger over the last few years, hasn't played in 82 games since 2018, 2019. And I know there've been some shortened seasons in here, but he had 59 games in 2019, 2020, 39 in 2020, 2021, 74, in 2021 2022 65 games last year 55 games this season and statistically he improved in goals and points but um you know this is just this is another one of those things too is as players age the ability for them to stay on the ice for full seasons becomes lower and lower and just kind of a it was an interesting season for Felino because offensively he was able to give a little more this year but it just felt kind of by and large like he was quieter this season than he's been in years past well i i think you know that is true uh but i also think he's had some horrendous line mates with them he he gets yes. the the uh you know majority of the year he was stuck with you know freddie goudreau or you know at times marcus johansson to you know it just uh, you know, just never, you know, when you're stuck with anchors on your line, that, that doesn't help, you know, but you know, it was, it was quieter too. And his, uh, um, you know, his playing style, um, you know, some, some players can age gracefully look at Joe Pavelski. I mean, he's 39 yeah. and still, still going and he doesn't miss games, but, uh, it's the way Marcus plays too is, uh, you know, he, uh, you know, his, you know, the, the reason why he's still in the league is, you know, his physicality and, uh, you know, sometimes he takes it uh, to another level where it can, you know, leave you prone for, for lower body injuries, which he's battled this season. And, uh, you know, I don't, I, if you need surgery that, you know, that that's never a good thing. Yeah. That's what I worry about. And we've heard this the last two seasons, especially is there have been points during the year in which, Felino is basically basically not practiced because he's trying to save as much as he can. Well, he had to go to that specialist in St. Louis too. Like, yeah, why, why, what couldn't the doctor see here that he had to go to St. Louis for? So that when you're looking for specific type of specialists or different opinions, that's never never a good thing either. Not not great. And so, best case scenario, you know, you get fully healed up and you, you get ready for next season, but, um, just, just another in a long line of players who have missed games this season. Um, I, I think the tally now is down to Marco Rossi and Brock Faber is the only two players on this team that are on pace to play a full 82 game season. <laughs> That's that's another that's another thing that makes it tough for you as a team to be able to put a consistent season together. So hopefully Felino is able to um, get himself back on track because especially with the loss of Brandon Duhame, with Pat Maroon being traded with, um, you know, the the rest of the physicality like they're gonna need him next year because uh, it was pointed out and i've mentioned this a couple of times it was pointed out in the discord server that the wild are the i think second shortest team in the nhl second smallest team in the nhl and so he is one of the players that is not that and so they're gonna need him to be able to uh just keep an eye on everything um, as the, uh, the season unfolds next year. Yeah. Bogosian can't be the only guy to, or, you know, you don't want Milton 
you know, Middleton uh, is such a you know key part of the decor too, and yeah, he can get banged up just like Felino, and you don't want him fighting all the time. Well, and that was that was a huge part of how things played out down the stretch is that Middleton was just too important defensively to be doing that stuff. <laughs> like you can't you can't fight somebody and then be put on the bench for five minutes when you're a top pairing defenseman, and so. With little depth, you know, without Spurgeon, you know. Yeah. Felino's going to, he's going to be needed in those instances in which things go awry on the ice, or as we'll talk about next, when <laughs> things just don't go your way. Uh, Ryan Hartman had himself a day against the Vegas Golden Knights, and it's likely going to cost him. We'll uh, we'll talk about what Hartman is facing and what he did, more importantly, that drew the ire of the officials. That's coming up as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wilds after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by Game Time. And as the weather continues to trend towards spring and summer, that means summer concert season is rapidly approaching. Major League Baseball, Minnesota Twins have gotten their season underway as well. So if you want to go see your favorite band or just go hang out at Target Field, Game Time can help make your ticket buying experience as stress free as possible. Game Time offers you great deals on last minute tickets. Plus, they also show you what you will see from your seat at whatever venue you're heading to. And best of all, they don't hit you with those hidden fees. What you see is what you're going to pay when you head to the checkout window. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Welcome back to today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. For the everydayers, a reminder, a little bit of a different schedule for you coming up tomorrow as uh, the Locked on Senators boys making the trip to XL Energy Center. And so I'll be getting a chance to uh, get a view of that game from the stands going as a fan for the first time since taking over as a host of Locked on Wild. So excited for that. We'll be bringing you some content during the game. Um, I'm bringing all the equipment with, and so we uh, uh, probably will try to do an episode with the Locked on Senators guys while they're in the vicinity. Um, so stay tuned. Otherwise, uh, we'll we'll have as much as we can get you throughout the course of the game. It will mean no standard postcast after Tuesday's game, but we'll be right back to normal come Thursday. So excited for that. Uh, may even have the opportunity to uh, to do a couple of meet and greets too on Tuesday. So stay tuned. We'll keep you up to date um, on the specifics there. Alex, Ryan Hartman had an interesting end to the game because this – happened pretty much as the game was finished Hartman got a game misconduct because as Russo mentioned flipped his stick at one of the officials because Hartman felt and he's not wrong right that he was high sticked by Noah Hanfin at the end of the game he clearly was wasn't called like he, he definitely was and so I'm not disputing that but what you can't have happen is what happened at that point is Hartman flipping his stick at the official. Like you have to, and he knows that, that, that is, you know, yeah. uh, you know, a definite no, no suspension or fine. And he's a, you know, he's a repeat offender. So that, <laughs> that does not help him in the eyes of the department of player safety at all. So he's looking at, since he had the hearing, it's likely that there will be a suspension. But 
Russo pointed out, it's interesting. He pointed out the fact that since it was a very definite missed call, that that might help his case and knock this down to simply a fine. But the point of the story is, I don't care if you are getting hosed on every single call. You can't go to that level. And there were a few calls during the game the Wild were not thrilled with. Um, the goaltender interference, also on Ryan Hartman. He was definitely pushed <laughs> into Logan Thompson. And that led to Hartman getting upset. That led to the Wild bench getting upset. That led to John Hines losing his mind on the bench. Jewel Erickson Eck later in the game gets tripped. No call. He went nuts. Bench went nuts again. Like, I understand that in a perfect world, officials don't get any calls wrong. But we're not in that type of a system. Officials are human. Officials miss. There were missed calls on both ends. The spearing call on Jack Eichel that also had a game misconduct. Like, that was a call that definitely benefited the Wild. It was a spear. But to add the game misconduct onto it was definitely a call that benefited the Wild. And so it goes both ways. But the thing that the officials look out for and will be more likely to react to is when you lose your composure. And that's and something that has happened to this Wild team far too much over the last few seasons. Yeah, right. Uh, you know, and when it's directed towards them too, they're <laughs> they are definitely going to call that out, uh, or in the league is not going to let that that fly with, with 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 Ryan Hartman, and they've dealt with him so many times beforehand. But yeah, you know, like like we've talked about it here on the on the pod. Uh, you know, it goes back to the Dallas series in the, in the playoffs last year, and uh, you know, <laughs> Pete DeBoer uh, needling uh, Dean, and uh, you know the players that, you know, they, um, you know, that they, they take penalties. That's, that's, that's what he said. That was, you know, you know and then, you know, got into Dean's head and he uh, tried to, you know, say something in his press conference too. And yeah, it just did not go well. And, you know, one of the games, Marcus took a really bad knee, kneeing call or penalty. And it just, it derailed the, the rest of the series. And I think there kind of becomes this notion that the officials are out to get out to get the wild. I don't agree with that, but what I will tell you is when whoever is officiating the game, when they see that they have the wild as one of the teams, they know that there are going to be a lot of calls made throughout the game. The Wild are not in the top five in the league in penalty minutes by accident. Right. Like it just is collectively something that they struggle with is discipline. Vinny Letary had the tremendously bad uh, tripping call earlier in the game in which he tried to reach completely around a Vegas player for the puck. You can't do that. And so many of these so many of the penalties that this like team takes are preventable are things that you just should never do and are done because you're either not in the correct position or because you get beat to a puck and you're trying to overcompensate as opposed to simply living for the next play and not letting a situation get worse. They let it get in their heads. Exactly. That's, you know, and then they go out of body like, uh, like Ryan Hartman did with this stick. Yeah. And so this is a situation now that because there was an escalation, there'll be a retaliation. And I guess, thankfully the team is pretty much out of it at this point to where because because you could you imagine if the wild were like two or three points back and all of a sudden now hartman misses all right three games yeah, due to a non-injury type of situation yeah. especially with felino now being shut down although a double whammy if the wild are still in the postseason like seriously in it 
there's no way Felino gets shut down. No, heck like no. he's he would still be trying to play, but probably know, making it worse than than it needs to be. Yeah. yeah, this again, this is another indicator that we are nearing the uh, we're nearing the end of the ride. The children have already thrown <laughs> up off the sides of the roller coaster. And now you as the parents are just like watching for the exit and just waiting for things to stop so that you can go clean up the mess. Get us home. Get us like, home. <laughs> this is no longer fun. Like, please just stop the ride so we can get off. Uh, there was one fun. Well, there were a few par- fun parts of Saturday. I, I thought by and large, it was a really entertaining game. Uh, one of the coolest parts I thought was something that happened at the end of the game. And so we're going to take just a little bit of a check at the progress of one Murat who's Nadinov because he got deployed in a high leverage situation by John Hines. And so we'll, uh, we'll talk about that to finish today's episode of locked on wild after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is also brought to you by Sleeper. We have hit the final month of the NHL season, and most of the NHL is either looking at draft position or just trying to figure out who they'll be playing in the postseason. And wherever your team slots in, you can still win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Locked on NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. All you have to do is pick whether your favorite NHL players, Kirill Kaprizov, Jewel Erickson, Matt Boldy, Matt Zuccarello, Marco Rossi will record more or less than their Sleeper projections in eight player categories. Use promo code LOCKEDONNHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code LOCKEDONNHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. Final segment of today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platform so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week. Seth Topol joined by Alex Micheletti. And Alex, I spend a lot of time watching Murat Huznadinov on Saturday. Came away very impressed. Uh, he just continues to he continues to look like when he's out there on the ice he has a plan and he just kind of has a knack for knowing where he needs to be in relation to everybody else. And the thing that got me the most excited was at the end of the game, John Hines threw Murat, who's Nadinoff out there with Matt Zuccarello and Ryan Hartman. And that was one of the lines that he tried to go win the game with. In addition to obviously the, Boldy, Kaprizov, Erickson, Eckline. But the fact that he's starting to get, didn't play in overtime. That would have been (laughs) cherry on top was playing in overtime. But the fact that John Hines, it seems, is starting to trust him more and be comfortable with him. Because I don't think, I don't think it was a situation of of Rossi being demoted by any stretch. I thought Rossi had a strong game himself. I think it was just Marat having one of those types of games where it's like, okay, we need to, we need to get him into a higher leverage situation. Something we've seen John Hines do quite a bit since he took over as head coach. And so I was, I was super jazzed to see him get that opportunity late. uh, If not for the uh, high sticking on Ryan Hartman, you maybe have a penalty that, maybe ends up winning you that game in regulation. But regardless, giving a young player an opportunity in a spot like that, something I would love to see more of down the stretch. 
Yeah, you know, for a non-playoff team, this is the opportunity where you can experiment. And uh, you know, with his transition to the NHL, it's been seamless. There hasn't been, you know, you you would think there would be more of a, you know, learning curve. But uh, you know, he's he's stepped in and looked like looked like a natural at the at one of the hardest positions in the league to you know to be successful at is center, as as we know with this with this franchise and the struggles that they've had at the center position. And uh, yeah, it's a uh, good, good for him. He's a smart player too. That, that helps so much too. And uh, you know, getting a chance to play like a, with a guy like Zuccarello we've talked about on here, who's has some of the best vision, um, you know, for, you know, how, or however long he's been in the league um, too. It's just, uh, yeah, it's, it's nice to ma- match up players that, you know, think, um, you know, the same, uh, on the ice there. And, uh, you know, he wins face-offs and, uh, you know, having that speed helps uh, a lot in this league too, because if you don't have wheels, you know, good luck. And they, the wild have got to get that second line figured out mm-hmm. next year. That has to be, that has to be objective number one, because according to our wonderful friends at moneypuck.com, Matt Boldy, Jewel Erickson, Ekin, Kirill Kaprizov, with a minimum of 300 minutes played this season, they have the highest goals for per 60 minutes in five on five in the entire NHL. Entire NHL. And so that's going to be your top line next year. Like, not even a debate. And so you have to get have to get a second line that can even be and they can do it they, it just you can't have Marcus Johansson be on it, it the, no. that is the main goal is to not have him you know be be on that second line and you know if you give a young guy like a Riley Height a, a chance to make the team or a, you know Liam Ogren maybe possibly too or you know you're off if they're able to get him signed too I mean I would rather much see a young guy put in that, you know, position on, uh, on the wing than, than Marcus Johansson, you know, cardio boy, one shot a game or, or nothing, or, you know, Freddie Goudreau having to be elevated in that type of position too, who seems to just not a care in the world when he's on the ice. Well, it's funny too, because I trend more and more towards Goudreau just not being not being capable of what we've seen over the last couple of seasons, still like still trying. It's but... the Randy, Randy Dobnik contract effect, but he's on the wild. I mean, not uh... the Iowa wild. He's, he's still, he's still up with, with the big club. Uh, it was an yeah. unnecessary weird extension for a guy that, you know, didn't need that long of a deal. Yeah. Like Goudreau's a nice guy and mm-hmm. oh, I, yeah. I get the nice sense. Guy on the team. I get the sense that he's he just does not have a lot to offer. I have a very different opinion of Marcus Johansson. Like last 20 games, I have it up. Last 20 games for Marcus Johansson, two goals, two assists, four total points, 20 total shots on goal in a 20 game span. And we should uh that is a great opportunity for me to update the one shot or less <laughs> the express the express line as i will uh definitively start calling it here uh perfect opportunity to um just try to get an updated count on that number because it was it was at uh, 39 games, I think, in about. So Johansson has played. He's played 69 games this year. And he's in double digit minutes. It's crazy. Yeah. He's played 69 games. I think he's played like four of them on the third line. So I'm just going to say he's played 65 games on the second line. And the one shot or fewer chart is now up to one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Wow, went on a nice, healthy shot run here in December. 
for whatever reason. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 41 of 65 games, 41 of 69 games, one shot or fewer. Where's the effort? Just out, I mean, just out there gliding, you know, cardio, you know, getting, <laughs> getting some laps. And it's, it's amazing too, when, you know, they're on special teams too, that, how do, you, how do you not get any any more shot attempts when it's well, basically man, and well, open season had, for that? He had the um, and I will like I will give full credit because Johansson had a fantastic pass at one point to set who's Nadinov up for a shot on the far side of the zone. Like that was a that was a great play, but that's. That's you don't see it enough, play. though. That's that's the issue. That's I mean, one play. It's there. I don't know where it went. It's like the Monstars took his, you know, the power. Yeah. And 90, 99 shots on the season, 27 of them came in December. For whatever like, reason, it was... Yeah. <laughs> just went nuts. Just went nuts in December, including a uh, season... Or no, season high... Season high came against the Washington Capitals on October 27th. Five yeah, shots against his old team. Yeah. Yep. Um. Yeah. They just they they just need to do better at that second line wing spot. And literally, I would rather anyone else. And it's anyone an opportunity for uh, you know the one of the young kids or you know because now there's some open spots potentially. Uh. You know. You would think they'd be on the lower lines, but you can move some veterans to the to the lower lines and get uh, you know uh, one of the younger guys in an elevated spot too. I mean, that left wing on on the second second line is definitely, I think, up for grabs. Um, I know, I know people's first preference wouldn't be to have Hartman in that spot, but Hartman at least in his last five games, sixteen shots. He's he's averaging three shots a game in that span since he kind of started to to slot back into that spot. He has yeah. he at least shows a pulse out there and energy he, and he'll he'll hit guys. You yeah. know, Hanson doesn't hit. Freddie no. doesn't hit. No. But main point, you have to find another line that can complement one of the best lines in hockey, like Boldy, Erickson at Kaprizov, like the numbers show it. It's one of the best lines in hockey since it got put together, but it's all they have. It's all the wild have at this point. And so you got to find somebody that can fill that other spot. Yeah, a hundred percent. Who that yeah. ends up being, we'll find out over these final nine games. Which is, you know, this is this is what we talk about. This is the time to experiment. Mm -hmm. There is two percent chance at playoffs. You know, this is where you <laughs> just, you know, it's it's not going to happen. You know, it's it's frustrating. It's uh, obviously Leopold. You know, he's he's going to be devastated. You know, because he's not getting you know, the playoff gate uh, there and, uh, you know, it stinks for the city of St. Paul, but, uh, yeah, just, uh, you know, this is how the season went. Uh, they, they couldn't overcome the injuries. They, you know, the coaching change, uh, I don't know if it was the right hire, but that's who, that's who Bill Guerin decided to go with. Didn't interview anybody else, but him, but his buddy, John Hines, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how that goes uh, into this off season. And it's, uh, you know, it's going to be an important draft for them to nail because um, they might be close to the top 10 there. And it's a, uh, it's a great, great draft uh, in the, in the first round at least. And uh, yeah, there's some intriguing names. Uh, Jerome McGinless son <laughs> is a, is a first round pick. We're getting when old. I saw that. Yeah. And that, that's one of the fall out of the chair moments uh, for a guy that we grew up watching and was a, was a wild killer and just, you know, just an overall great human to just an awesome player. I knew it was over when I saw that T Y Hilton's son was going in the NFL draft this year. I'm like, Oh boy. Remember when we saw Frank Gore's son too? I was like, Oh my God, <laughs> pack it up. 
pack it up. It's it's entirely downhill from here. So speaking of entirely downhill from here, nine more games this season. And, uh, you know, we're we're hoping to see just some looks to the future in these final nine games. And so we'll continue to campaign for that as far as right now goes. Next up is the Ottawa senators on Tuesday. So we'll see what we, uh, we'll see what we glean from, uh, from that, that game. I have no, <laughs> with, <laughs> with the way the senators have been this season too. It's like, they are the wild of the East kind of yeah. this season and uh, a lot more talent uh, they should be so much better, but they're right there with the wild uh, out of the playoff spots. Locked on senators is 13. Oh, and one in person as a show. And so that is on the line. So it won't surprise me if it's another overtime loss for the Suns. <laughs> I don't feel I don't feel like this will be a game that'll be handled in regulation. Chick- Chick- Chickering like falls over and it <laughs> leads to a breakaway goal. Freddie Goudreau scores a hat trick. John Merrill with two goals. Marcus Johansson with two goals. Seven to two win. But that would all of my chickens would be coming home to roost then. <laughs> <laughs> that way it would be fitting, you know, with the way this roller coaster of a season yeah. has been to, to have all the all those guys score goals. <laughs> well, that'll be what ends up happening, which reminds me, I still have to order the uh, the hot chip because John Merrill scored a few the games Anaheim ago game, or the yeah. that was that was bananas when he when he scored. Anaheim just did that. They are having the most miserable season. You know, you have Trevor Zegers taking out the, the penalty box camera too. That was something else. It's, and they were on national TV. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not always, it's not always as easy said and done to pull yourself out of a, uh, a tank, but we, we've got a lot of off season to debate all of that. And we will, um, as of right now, Tuesday is uh, next on the schedule for your Minnesota Wild. But that will do it for today's episode of Locked on Wilds. Uh, thank you for listening here today. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you have not already. And if you are one of our wonderful audio listeners, make sure to uh, subscribe on your favorite podcast platforms as well so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week. We've got new episodes for you every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Podcast Network.